Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about ILS, the Instrument Landing System. And as usual, we are only going to cover what we pilots need to know without going into too much of unnecessary details. So, without any further ado, let's dive right in. We will be covering the following. 1. What is an ILS? 2. The principal working of an ILS. 3. ILS components. 4. ILS coverage and range. 5. Frequency range. What is an ILS? ILS, or Instrument Landing System, is a ground-based radio navigation system that provides both lateral and vertical guidance to assist pilots land their aircraft in IMC or instrument meteorological conditions, meaning low or reduced visibility. It can also be used in VMC or good visibility. The aircraft needs to be fitted with a VHF ILS receiver to convert the picked up data and display it to the pilot on the PFD, primary flight display. Two, working principle. The ILS works in conjunction with an airborne receiver based on DDM, difference in depth of modulation, where both the localizer and glide slope antennas emit two lobes of radio waves each, both are frequency modulated, 90 hertz and 150 hertz. Now, as long as the onboard system is receiving both signals equally, 90 and 150, this translate into the aircraft as being on the localizer or on the glide slope. However, if the MMR, multi-mode receiver, which is the onboard receiver that receives and converts the signals, senses that one frequency is being received more than the other. This could be due to crosswind or a sudden gust or simply poor manual flying skills which in turn would be displayed as a deviation from the center line of either the, the localizer or the glide slope. Three ILS components. The ILS system consists of three main components. First, guidance information, provided by both the localizer antenna, which is always placed towards the far end of the runway, and the glide slope antenna, which is always placed either left or right of the runway about 300 to 400 meters down the runway, usually near the poppies. Next, range information. Range information, or how far are you from the threshold, is provided by DME, distance measuring equipment, which is paired with the same ILS on the same frequency. We may also get range information from marker beacons, which now are becoming obsolete with the rise of the accuracy of DME and GPS. The third and last component is visual information. We get visual information first as approach lighting system. There are plenty of types of approach lighting systems. Perhaps we can make a video about it soon. We can also get visual information as runway lightings, such as touchdown zone lights, runway centerline lights, threshold lights, etc. Four. ILS coverage. For the localizer, we can pick up the signal from 18 nautical miles away when within 10 degrees of centerline, and from only 10 nautical miles if within 35 degrees of runway centerline. The glide slope signal, however, can only be picked up up to 10 nautical miles when within 8 degrees of runway centerline. 5. Frequency range. The ILS operates in the VHF band frequency between 108.11 MHz and 111.95 MHz with odd decimals. This adds up to about 40 channels in total. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have found this short video about ILS helpful. If you have any question kindly, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Until next time, see you.